Hello my loves, it's Ro. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about, ooh, it's a juicy one, questions you should never ask a prison wife. I might know from experience. <laughs> and we're going to have a guest star. So if you're interested in questions that you should never, ever, 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 ever ask a prison wife, please keep watching. If you're new here, my name is Ro. I am the founder of a nonprofit organization called Strong Prison Wives and Families, the author of a book called The Comeback Code. I'll put a link to it right up there. It is all of my juicy little secrets that I learned throughout the time that my loved one has been incarcerated. So if you need help, even if you're not a prison wife or a family member, I got you. If you need help with self-confidence, if you need help on goal setting, mm this book's for you. There is absolutely nothing to glorify or glamorize about prison life or being a prison wife. Frankly, it sucks. However, we are here to live above stigma, beat statistics, and make the best out of this really difficult journey. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Before you leave, subscribe and ring that bell so you get a notification every single time I post a new video, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and sometimes on the days in between. Okay. This video was inspired by a video that I did a couple of years ago called Things People Say to Prison Wives. It started with an S, but we're not allowed to use that word and I didn't feel like bleeping. I did it kind of in a comical manner and I just stumbled upon it the other day. It was one of my most fun videos to make because it was a parody, it was a comedy. I kind of wanted to dive into it a little further because of things that I've experienced in the past by people at visit in processing fellow prison wives, there is an etiquette, and I'll go into that a little bit, and then also by people on the outside who just don't seem to understand. Not that we expect them to, but we also don't expect them to be rude. The first one happened to me while I was at the bank getting singles for my visit. So anybody that doesn't have a loved one who's incarcerated at different facilities, there are vending machines, and either you can bring in singles or they have a little card that you could put money on prior to going to visit. Where I go, I can only bring in singles and fives up to $40. For me, it's easier just to bring in all singles because otherwise I'm traveling with tons of quarters, which are a pain in the butt. They're heavy. Your girl can't lift all that weight. Just kidding. So I'm at the bank and the teller asked me, girl, what you doing with all them singles? And I said back to her, nothing fun or exciting, but I swear one of these days I'm going to work up the nerve to say, oh, because I'm going down the street to fulfill my wildest fantasies at Bada Bing. What you up to this weekend? Did I just age myself with that Sopranos reference? Here is a fun little fact that you might or might not probably don't know about me. Bada Bing was a strip club in the show Sopranos. That was actually a real go-go bar here in New Jersey, but it was called Satin Dolls. And I have frequented there way back when Sopranos was the big thing because I had a really good friend who DJed there. How's that for some useless news? Side note number two, do they only call dollar bills singles in this part of the country? Because I'm telling you, every single time I waited to get my dollar bills till I got to Western Pennsylvania, I would go into the Walmart and I would ask different clerks every single time, can I have 40 singles? And they would look at me like I had 500,000 heads on my neck. At first time I was like, what, did she not hear me? And then I realized they didn't understand what singles meant. So I asked her, can I have $1 bills, I mean? And she goes, oh, ones. I was like, yeah, that's what I said. So maybe they're called ones and singles in different parts of the country. I don't know, but whatever. It's kind of like here we call pizza, a piece of pizza, a slice. And my ex-boyfriend went to uh, the Midwest or something somewhere. He went into a pizzeria and he asked for a slice and he was given a soda. Okay. The second thing you do not want to ask somebody when they tell you that their loved one is in prison is, oh, what did he do? Or why is he in jail? Girl, why are you so nosy? What's the worst thing your husband ever did? Tell me all about it. Oh, you don't want to tell me? <gasps> great, great. I'll just refrain from telling you too. Now, here's a little caveat, you guys. There's a difference between just human curiosity and frankly, people being nosy. If you're on the outside and you tell somebody your loved one's in prison, it's probably very common for them to ask you back, oh my gosh, why, what did he do? You have to assess the situation as it comes up. However, if you are visiting a loved one in prison and you're talking to somebody in the visit room or online or while you're waiting to be processed, don't ask what their loved one did, it's uncouth, it's not kosher and it's totally against prison wife or family member etiquette. I also wanna read a quote that my friend Heather Moore wrote in an article that she did for the Marshall Project. Heather said, 
Jumping right into that question feels dehumanizing because it reduces the person in prison to nothing more than whatever their charge might be. Yes, these are people who may have been convicted of a crime, but they're still people. Even the bad people are still someone's mother, father, child, or friend. Okay, and here's a row side note. Certain crimes aren't discussed on the inside because they can get people in trouble in there. They can get people beat up. They can get people to lose their lives. They could get people transferred to another facility or, God forbid, life flighted out of there. You have to remember, crimes aren't charged today as they were many, many years ago when prison politics were formed and people with certain crimes would get the crap beat out of them. A lot of these crimes have become watered down and with things like the internet, there are links in bed into certain images that the feds are watching. Somebody downloads an image embed in there in sort of a zip file is another image that's extremely illegal, use your imagination, and that person gets slapped with a certain type of charge. Or these are real case scenarios, you guys. You have to understand that things have gotten very diluted right now. There are women who are very evil and vindictive that know that all you have to say is a certain word, make a certain accusation, and you'll get that man locked up and you can get him locked up and in a situation where it's very, very unsafe for him. So a lot of people with certain kinds of crimes don't talk about it. It's a don't ask, don't tell, especially when you're at prison visit. I need to make it very clear. I am not saying that I agree or disagree with certain things, but what I'm saying is it is not black and white textbook anymore. Plus, let's be real here, it's complicated. A lot of people don't get the amount of time that is equivalent to what they did for their crime. Look at Adam. I can't tell you how many people just make assumptions that he took people's lives, that he did things to children, that he did things to a mass amount of people because you hear the number 213 years and oh, you just assume that he did something heinous because our justice system would never, ever mess up. If you're new and you don't know why Adam got a 213 year sentence, I will link a video in the cards above that explains everything, the background of his case in his words, but for sake of this video, just know that a lot of people don't understand law, nor should they. They don't have any experience in that. Ignorance is bliss in those types of situations. But for you, they're gonna make assumptions, they're gonna assume you're lying, they're gonna assume that you're bending the truth or protecting him or you're just some in denial, crazy, stupid girl who is gaga for him and is just believing him for face value. The third question that you really don't wanna ask a prison wife or family member is, how long does he have? None of your business. Okay, fine, I'll tell you. How long do you have for me to explain this to you? Law is very tricky. Cases are very intricate. There are so many different routes and directions that somebody who's been accused of a crime can take to get to a final destination of a sentence. Mass incarceration is insane in the United States. Mandatory minimums are out of control. So we just don't ask people how long their loved one has left when you're inside a prison visit. And remember to take it with a grain of salt if you're telling somebody on the outside because human curiosity, sometimes it's the next logical question for somebody to ask when you're divulging that information. Like, oh, well, how long are you gonna wait? How long do you have to wait? And not in a condescending, how long are you gonna wait way? We'll get to that later. But in a just, I'm curious, I don't have any experience here. I'm genuinely ignorant. Teach me. Number four goes hand in hand with number three and it's how much longer does he have? I've gotten this question in visit and I could tell you that is so awkward for long-termers, lifers, and worst of all, death row wives to have to answer. I remember walking out of visit one time. It's a two minute walk from the visit room to the front processing room where you leave out of the front door and you go to your car. And somebody asked me that question, how long does your husband have left? And I remember like fumbling and not knowing if I should answer or not. And finally I said, he got a really long time and she pressed me, how long? And I said, well, he got this 213 year sentence. It was unfair. I'm trying to explain mandatory minimum sentences to her. I see the cop giving me the side eye, like this chick is crazy. Adam was new there. I don't think all the cops knew his case or his time yet. So he's giving me the side eye, like this chick is crazy. I'm trying to give a legal dissertation on mandatory minimum sentencing to this girl who asked me a simple question. She turns around, she's in shock, gets emotional. She's trying to console me. I'm trying to console her back saying, it's okay, I'm okay, he'll be okay. And it just made for this big awkward 
weird situation. It's another question where you have to gauge it based off of who's asking and what their intentions feel like in the moment. If it's somebody on the outside, it's probably the same as the question before, how long did he get? Same thing, how much longer does he have? You understand why they're asking that. If it's somebody who's just kind of poking at you, you don't owe them any explanations. And inside prison life etiquette, we just don't ask. That's just leave well enough alone. Now, if somebody asks me how much longer Adam has, I simply say a long time and then I flip it back on them with a question. That's it, the end. If they like to press and say, well, how long? I say, ugh, a really long time. It's so complicated to get into. And I leave it at that. What are they gonna do, keep asking? I know what they're gonna do. They're gonna go to the visit room as soon as their loved one comes out. They're gonna point to me and Adam and say, yo, what's up with that guy? How much time does he have? His wife was being shady. I don't care. You guys talk about it. Everybody in there knows. It is what it is. Just don't ask you guys. It just makes for a really awkward situation for people like me who have long unjust or just long sentences, period. Number five, but what about sex? Are you gonna wait that long to have sex? You can't really wait that long in the 500 different variations of that question. And I learned this from my friend, Joe. Genius. She'll turn around and say, did you have sex with your husband last night? And people will be like, oh! and then she'll be like, well, I want the details, tell me. And when they're all taken back, she simply just reminds them that it's an inappropriate question to ask. You don't like when I ask you about your private adult life. What makes you think that I'm open to answer your questions about mine? Just because my relationship is not traditional or conventional or doesn't look like yours does not in any way, shape or form mean that you're allowed an inside perspective of what goes on in my bedroom letters, emails, phone calls, etc. cetera. Mm -mm. So uncouth, shoot that down, girl. The sixth question that you should never ask a prison wife is, but don't you wanna get married? Or don't you wanna have babies? Or don't you get sick of going to events alone? Don't you want companionship? Don't you want, I'm sorry, why do I need to explain my grown up desires, wants, and decisions in my own personal life to you? Just. Help me figure that out. Keep your eyes on your own paper, my friend. Or maybe not friend, probably not friend, probably a complete stranger who I've never seen before who thinks you deserve a front row and center seat to my life. Nah, bye. Number seven, why are you waiting? Why are you with that douchebag who verbally assaults you, has made you lose every ounce of self-confidence and expects you to be his maid? Number eight, what happens if he drops the soap? Oh, please. Bless your ignorant little heart, my sweet friend. It's time for you to get some new material. That wasn't ever funny at all. Your uh, 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 joke is way past its expiration date. <laughs> oh, does anyone smell rotten milk? Oh wait, it's just another expired and went bad decades ago soap on a rope joke. <sighs> Number nine, I can't do my fingers. Nine, okay. Number nine, do you think he's messing with somebody in there? Which is usually delivered more as a definitive statement. You know he's fucking someone in there. Oh, sorry guys, this is where I have a guest star coming in. Give me a second. I need to introduce you to my not so sweet alter ego. Her name is Hosan for short. Sometimes we call her Ho. Hold on, she'll be right in. Okay, Mr. Watches too much TV has an extremely overactive imagination is extremely insecure about your manhood and the fact that you're probably not getting any. Go on with your brilliant, omniscient, all-knowing self. Happy to hear you'll be getting some when you go to jail because we all know you ain't getting any out here. Okay, fine, okay, I'm, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. Oh, sorry guys, what a sarcastic bitch. But you gotta love her sometimes, huh? Number 10, what's your deal? I can't figure you out said by a CEO. This one was also out of Heather's article and I wanna read what she wrote. Cause I think this happens a lot more often than a lot of us talk about. Heather said, my relationship is still questioned by strangers even at the correctional facilities where my husband lives. At one, I approached the desk to check in for a visit and the CEO said, inmate number and your ID please. I followed the directions. And then I assume he noticed her address on the form that she had to fill out to get into visit. And he said, oh, Kansas. Why would you get involved all the way from Kansas? Did you meet him on one of those websites? If a CO says something to you guys at visit that's inappropriate, that needs to be reported. It is so unprofessional. It is out of their job description and they can get in trouble for that. 
So it's up to you if you want to report it. But what I want you to do is do your best to bite your tongue and keep your cool. And then I need you to respond in a way that says, this is not funny. I am not joking and you will not tolerate being harassed. I'd love to know in the comments below the inappropriate questions you've gotten about your life before. Even if you haven't dealt with prison wife life, I'd love to know if people ask intrusive questions that just are weird. Let me know in the comments below. You guys keep staying strong, keep loving strong, keep supporting one another through this journey because you're one day closer to all being behind you. Lots of love from my heart and Adam's heart to all of yours. I'll see you beautiful ladies and gentlemen in the next one. Bye guys. <laughs> I am so sorry I am out of breath and maybe a little bit sniffly today. I am fighting a cold, which thank God I haven't gotten completely, but it's making it hard to breathe while I talk.